Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Creators to Creators today. Today we have a special guest. Z Kendall. Um, I'm an actor, producer, and entertainment attorney. That's amazing. Um, so tell me, uh, I'm just really happy to have you on. It's It's been a long time since I've actually seen you. It's been some years now, but it's really good to see you. And thank you for coming on and sharing your story with us. Um, tell me a little bit about like your childhood, kind of like what that was like. And how did you find your way into doing the things that you're doing now? Well, yeah, so I was, uh, uh, my dad was, uh, uh, you know, a famous actor, I guess, in Canada. Um, he was a working actor in LA, um, doing quite a bit of pilots and, um, you know, recurring roles on series. Um, and then he got a big job working um, ENG. It was it was sort of a, a TV newsroom, um, sort of on the level of friends, you know, type thing in Canada. Um, he got the lead role, so it was a big deal for him. Unfortunately, that kind of hurt me a little bit because he had to move away and then my mom didn't want to move to Toronto. So it was sort of like led to the divorce, which, you know, I don't want to be talking about that, um, unfortunately. But basically, I would kind of spend time in Toronto and then come back and, um, you know, the, the industry wasn't quite as solid in Toronto as it is now. Um, but basically, he won a Gemini for that, which was like the equivalent of an Emmy. Um, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, and I was on set. I kind of grew up on set. So um, he kind of threw me into to child acting stuff. And, um, you know, the actually I had a mental breakdown on set um, oh my God. where like the director um, wanted me to eat hot dogs and say, you know, seafood or something. And then like I open my mouth and there's like hot dogs in it or whatever. And um, I don't know, I just had a mental breakdown and my dad felt bad that he was forcing me to do that or whatever. And then I did some other commercials and other things and photo shoots and, th and uh, long story short, I went away from acting. Um, when I was in fifth grade, I did play a play and then kind of got the acting bug for a little while longer and then went away from it and then um, turned pro in tennis. That was kind of my independent um, thing that I could do away from that. And um, as I got off the tour, I started doing real estate um, and then realized I wanted to kind of get back into acting and, and kind of being more creative because I wasn't, you know, itching my creative uh, scratch, you know, so to speak. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, just started kind of grinding from the bottom. And, uh, you know, I felt like I wanted to create my own content. Uh, you know, as, as you know, auditioning is not very fun. <laughs> um, so I pretty much felt like I want to create my own stuff and, um, yeah. and I created happenstance. Um, that was really cool. Me and my buddy, Joel O'Neill, um, we'd been working on shorts for about six months and we ended up kind of creating this sort of, uh, you know, partial true to life thing, um, sort of with me three, you know, myself three years earlier. And, um, I was able to kind of reenact certain parts of it, but, you know, it was about, you know half true half not and um we ended up getting to you know kind of doing the festival circuit and getting to can and then we ended up um, um selling it to a distributor so it was really really amazing and then um yeah just just continually grinding um we did get a little screwed over by the distributor so that motivated me to become an entertainment attorney and um yeah and yeah, exactly <laughs> and you did it and you did it yeah 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 I, I, it's, it, I, I remember signing a pretty bad contract early on. I was very green and it was so devastating because you're thinking, well, I got a distribution deal and it's going to be on these websites. It's going to be out on DVD. It's going to be over here. But then you're like, wait a minute, I have 10 years with them on this contract. I can't get out. Like, and th it's really the fine print, like really knowing um, what you're really getting into. It's kind of almost like selling your soul or selling your baby over to someone else. And yeah, then I felt like see... the baby thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, my gosh. 
Yeah. So, I mean, we I got mean, lucky and made half our money back prior to that, you know, just kind of doing good. festival stuff and this and that. Um, it was a very low budget. It was like 50 K out the door and, and we had a good, good script, good stuff. It, people really liked it, but yeah, it, it was about a year. And then with the option for three years with the distributor and I felt like, mm. you know, kind of trapped at that point. And I was realizing like, wow, like I'm really in a tough position and I want to figure out how to, how to help people as well as myself, you know, yeah. not get in, you know, protect creatives basically. Cause a lot of creatives don't think about that. And I wanted to pr protect creatives pretty much. Yeah. I mean it, that, and I thank you for doing that. I mean, I think it's, I, I, for me, it's like, how, how does the company still stay in business when there's so many people that they screw over? I, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's sort of a little bit Ponzi ish scheme. -y. You know, um, they just kind of keep moving on to the next and, and kind of get enough. And then they kind of do all the loopholes and screw people over, basically. And, and you know, but there's great companies out there. You just got to find the right, you know, your right tribe. And then um, I think that is kind of what it's all about is finding the, the right people at the right times for yourself and obviously getting lucky a little bit, too, and and all that. So. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've, I, I would, what, what would, what would you categorize yourself? Would you say that you are a, like a entrepreneur, like you do it all because I mean, you've done real estate um, that, I mean, you just, you just, would you say that you just don't want to limit yourself? Is that because it's like, you don't want to put yourself in a box and you want to do whatever you want to do? Um, I mean, you know, for me, like I kind of alluded to with early on in, in my career, so to speak, with with child acting, let's say, um, I realized sort of, um, you know, the dark side, let's say, of, uh, you know, Hollywood um, yeah. early on. And, um, you know, my dad, um, you know, guided me quite a bit. Um, and basically, he he's like, oh, wow, you're much more, you know, you're thinking about like the big picture much more than I did, because he was kind of a pure actor, you know, mm. pure sort of artist. Right. And and I'm more so, you know, kind of practical sort of I've been, you know, highly educated, not to say he 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 didn't graduate high school. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and um, my mom didn't graduate college. So it's like I'm the first one to kind of pave the way with that, which they helped me do that. Right. Um, right. But it, it's sort of like a thing where, you know, I kind of think about it. I can't help but think about it from a bigger picture um, you know, mindset, I can drop in and, and do acting and do that. And it's very fun. Like I love mm -hmm. acting. It's like amazing. You know, it's, mm -hmm. there's, there's not many more things in my life other than playing like a big tennis tournament, you know, type yeah. thing. Which now my body can't really do that anymore. <laughs> um, but th that, right. That feeling that, that high, that buzz, that, you know, actors, you know, thing that you get, um, is, is amazing. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I just feel like there's, you know, I want to pave the way for myself as well as others to have a healthy environment to do that. Mm. So everyone has a win-win, you know, I know it sounds corny, but that's, you know, most projects I get on, that's sort of what I want to do. I don't want to exploit anyone. I don't want to have a negative experience for people. I want it to be a fun, creative environment. And that's why I do like indie films and I've kind of gone out and I, gone out of my way to do more indie films because it usually is more um, that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's interesting that you talk about the dark side of Hollywood because it does, it, you know, it seems like a lot of that now is coming out uh, more on the forefront. I mean, it's been around for many years and, you know, this, this kind of dark cloud that they, they say Holly weird. Um, uh, you see that the documentary, um, quite on set the the dark side of child acting i literally just finished watching and it was really hard to watch yeah i um, worked but, with josh but, peck too in an acting class oh, for sharing yeah. chatting too and um yeah you know it's 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 tough for everybody yeah yeah and i'm just glad that people are sharing that and showing that because i i've 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 been always been a believer that i think you know child acting is is that's a really tough age you know and they're so young and pure and you, 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 there's no way to always be around the kids, you know, and you, you, I mean, you can't really trust everyone. Um, and it was just, wow. Um, so I'm glad that we're talking about it now, I guess. Yeah, more I so. mean, 
it's tricky because you know as a producer let's say if i put on the producer hat um you need kids to act in movies right but it also if you have them leading the movies i feel like it's sort of a tricky situation because they have to go through so many emotions they don't understand um you know a lot of people around them trying to take advantage of them um it, it's a very very tricky situation um and you know obviously i think california's done a good job although you know stringent right with the legal side of it they really do protect minors um you know so that's good but i just feel like emotionally mentally you know you got even like the Leo DiCaprio, right? You know, it's like, yeah. for example, like, you know, him being on the set of uh, Growing Pains or whatever, or even before that, I forget what the name is, but, you know, him getting maybe molested or this or that, yeah. like it, it's, it, and that, that goes down the laundry list or even just the other side of it where you're not getting, you know, let's say sexually assaulted, right? You're actually getting stardom that young and you don't know what to do, do with it. Um, yeah. That's a other ball game too where you you can't get that let's say high anymore you know with anything else and and it's it's kind of a a tough situation to be in too and and you know they say a lot of people like you know they kind of are who they are when they got famous um mm -hmm. you know and and that's that's tricky too because it, it just sort of gets you stuck in this sort of uh you know let's say uh you know immature state right so um yeah i don't know yeah it, it's and, and it's it is, it is very tricky and it scares me because it's like, how how can, you know, something so like monumental like Nickelodeon and those kind of things and or Disney can can kind of, you know, allow people, I guess, not doing background checks or really thoroughly checking people's credentials and really doing their work. But and and and, and if, if it's that's kind of what blows my mind, um, it's like, how how is this allowed? But. Um, I guess I think it just it's coming to light. Yeah. yeah, I think it's coming to light more. I mean, I, I, you know, there's there's a gift and a curse with social media. Um, there's a gift and a curse with all these things. Um, but I do think it promotes sort of um, awareness, like you're saying, for better or worse. Um, and I do think there's situations where that's good and bad. Um, but I think in this case, right, it's good because, you know, you want people to... Yeah. The, the more awareness, the better, like if people are aware of that, they won't do it. Right. Like if, if enough people are like on set with, you know, social media with, you know, cameras on their phone, um, th there's less opportunities. I think back then, you know, in the eighties, nineties, you know, even before that it was, there wasn't that, you know, there wasn't like documentarians on the set. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, saw, you you spoke about the you know your feature film. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit of, a, of like your experience on co-creating, writing, directing, and producing your first feature film, uh, Happenstance? Like you know more in the detail of like how that like the process that c come along, and I guess and then why did you uh, why Happenstance? Um, yeah, so I you know I was uh, like I said I was kind of coming out of tennis, which kind of trains you to be sort of a a robot let's say right mm. it's not like you don't want to be too up too down you want to just be steady you want to be that so I kind of trained myself you know I was an outgoing guy and grew up in the thing and you know all that and love having fun um, but then I I kind of formed myself after three years on the tennis tour to to be sort of this this way um, and then I was like wow I have all these connections with real estate you know country club style connections I'm like wow I can make a living doing this but mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm kind of like, I, I feel almost antisocial at this point. And I had to like break out of my own shell. So I'm like, oh, I'll take some acting classes kind of to, to break out of my own shell, really. And then started taking acting classes kind of the first time I ever did a scene. I was like the whole world like shrunk down. And I was like, <laughs> what is going on? I couldn't even like say anything or do anything. And it was, it was, you know, and that, but then I kind of slowly start breaking through over the weeks and coming back, you know, just keep coming back. Yeah. Um, and I got through tennis kind of just keep coming back, keep trying, keep trying. And then, you know, you'll learn. And, you know, if you have the right attitude, you got to just be patient with yourself and keep grinding. And then I met 
the right people kind of. Um, and I didn't, you know, know how to write a script. I didn't know how to do these things, but I met people like that. I had story ideas. I had kind of co-writing, you know, enough to where, and then, you know, when we were on set, you know, we, we had a little room for improv. So mm -hmm. there was things like that going on. Um, but we actually originally shot it sort of as like, an actor's real thing and we had friends that we wanted to include in it so we kind of wrote around it was sort of like I hate to say like the La La Land thing you yeah. know where you write mm -hmm. around the person's personality right it's like you actually right. are writing for them and Joel and Neil was amazing like that he can kind of you know see, see through people right he can kind of see that's you this this and that and and he did that with me he did that with a lot of other people I mean we had a ton of cast in this and it was sort of like a collage of people coming in and out um it, it was great I mean we would have done a lot of things different obviously but um you know we kind of got to the point where we're we had something going so we shot like a third of it and then we raised a little more money and you know then shot a third of it and then shot a third yeah. of it within you know about three months so we were kind of shooting on weekends, shooting around people's other schedules. We had some actors that were doing other work and people that had full-time jobs. So we were trying to shoot around everything. And um, it ended up actually coming out pretty good. And um, I love so it. we, it, but it took about two years on the festival circuit. And then we got the can and then, um, you know, it was the mar the market, the can market, but, you know, that was pretty, we had to qualify for that. And then we got in and then, um, luckily enough, we met a distributor and then, and then it worked out, but yeah, I was there for two weeks, kind of hustling nice. at sales, um, in Cannes. And then finally we got somebody. Yep. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. So, um, so tell me a little bit also too, you have your hands in politics. Uh, I love that. And, uh, please elaborate what, what made you go into politics and, and that world, you know? Um, actually, yeah. So when when I was in law school, um, I was studying constitutional law and um, I'm kind of your your typical Democrat California guy. Um, but I also <laughs> with um, my grandpa in Tennessee and in Pennsylvania, who was a typical Republican, not like a MAGA Trump guy, just like sort of a smart, <laughs> savvy Republican that was sort of middle of the road. Um, and he worked in politics. He worked for um, he worked for Eisenhower. He worked for JFK. He worked nice. for you know uh, Lyndon Johnson Ford. After that, Nixon. And then when Jimmy Carter came in, he left. And then he was actually one of the first lobbyists. So he was one of the the first guys to kind of start using his political connections to to get you know companies like AstraZeneca specifically. Um, now it gets kind of a bad name, but back then you know they do a lot of good too. Right. It's like not mm -hmm. all bad. Um, so anyway, he did that. And, um, so I feel not kind of spiritually connected to that. Um, but you know, you start to kind of get in the world and, you know, I realized with constitutional law, like we got to participate in our democracy or else it will change for better or worse. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever your opinion is, I, I welcome all opinions, you know, like I, That's you know, good. I mean, we got to be careful because, you know, we don't want to be, you know, destroying America because I feel like I've traveled all, all over the world with tennis and I feel like America is the best country I've ever been at. Mm. You know, um, mm -hmm. L.A., I think it's the best city in the world, you know, but I'm biased because I was born here <laughs> um, and I love it. But, you know, I think we need to get involved with our government or else other people will. And I think other people may not have the best of intentions, you know, or other right. countries like Russia or whatever might try to undermine us to weaken us so that they have more strength, you know? So that's kind of what, what motivated me. And then also, you know, my, my buddy, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, he, I've known him for about four years. I was, I was, uh, interning for him um you know kind of during covid and i was like wow this guy's speaking the truth during covid um and then you know i went on a hike with him the first day that he declared and then i was like what can i do for you and sort of then i started a super pack and then you know after about six nine months it was sort of getting getting too dramatic so i felt like i need to kind of step away and i i need to do more nonpartisan stuff so i created a mobilizing civic engagement which is sort of a nonpartisan um, entity to promote voter registration nice. um, in general, because 
you know, I don't mind who you vote for. I just want people to vote and get involved. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, how do you feel like the state of like ev everything and how <laughs> how everything's going right now um, in, in politics? I mean, it's it's interesting what we see. Um, do you feel like we're we're heading in a better direction with I don't know. I mean, going. <laughs> it's, it's tricky. It's, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not privy to everything. Um, but I, I feel like it's, um, you know, we got Joe Biden, like, you know, I, I supported him in 2020. I was, I was sort of an anti-Trump guy, um, you know, and, and I agree with like about, you know, 30% of what Trump says. I'm glad like he's up there saying some stuff, but the other 70% is just like shocking and horrible. And, and he's just kind of a narcissist all about himself basically. Mm. Um, and um, Biden, you know, does some good stuff and he's a good delegator and he has good people on his thing, uh, on his administration. But, you know, I think he's too old. I think he's out of it. I think, um, you know, we need some new blood in there. Um, that's why I like Bobby. I, I know him personally. So I know how open he is to certain things, you know, and I think there's things where, you know, he can evolve his, his, position on but mm -hmm. he's open to evolving it's not like a politician where you know he's not going to address what he was wrong about it's not like he's gonna you know shut down when it comes to sort of learning and and you know being like i was wrong about that and i'm changing my opinion um and yeah i think i think he's kind of tapping into this independent sort of vibe that's now happening to where you know it's not the polarizing bipartisan thing boom 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 back and forth where we're fighting each other mm. uh, i think there, there's a middle ground now that is a beautiful thing and healthy debate is is very important to me you know and, I, and I, I love that yeah healthy debate you're absolutely right i think a lot of times um i think it was i don't know i was watching something with the um Candace Owens and Shapiro talking about something about like just to, they you know they don't obviously see eye to eye on everything, and I th I don't you know I don't think anyone sees eye to eye with everyone on you know on the Daily Wire, but they were talking about just how we have to have these conversations because if we don't, I mean, then we're just no better. We're fighting each other and nothing's getting done. So absolutely, absolutely agree with that. Um, I just hope things get better. Um, like I said, we all we can do is just hope people will, will vote. Um, and that's just <laughs> that's the wish and, and prayer that things will, you know, people will vote and get out there and and hopefully things will change for the better. That's that's, yeah. you know, I don't I don't know. But um, yeah, I just yeah. feel like if, you know, people think their vote doesn't count. Right. There's a lot of apathy. Um, there's also a lot of, um, you know, now voter fraud stuff, which, you know, there might be a little bit of that, but it's not as prevalent as the Trump supporters say, let's say. Um, but yeah, I just feel like people need to understand that their vote counts, that they need to get out there and get involved, you know, um, especially locally. I think like, you know, the presidential, you know, elections, great, but hyper local you know i've had a lot of you know friends of mine like eric swalwell for example um you know bobby himself too that it's just local 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 you know you got to start local with your you know city council right even your neighborhood um associations mm -hmm. right there's a lot of like unofficial neighborhood associations or homeowners associations that are important and then you go up to county level right depending on the structure of the government and then the state and then you know the the nation right with your with your congressmen senators and then the president but yeah you, you just need to understand government i think we should all take more civic classes because i was in i was in constitutional law and i'm like oh my God, I don't know the first thing about this. And then I felt bad and then I kind of just forced myself to learn a lot. And then I took a government elective class in my last year as I was studying for the bar. And, you nice. know, I was like, wow, this is, you know, um, I didn't know any of this. So, you know, I think we need to learn how government works 
because there's a lot of like, let's say, you know, I mean, look again, like Black Lives Matter, these things, that thing, I think they're all good movements, you know, don't get me wrong. It's just, you can't tear down sort of the, you can't tear down a good thing, right? Yeah, just yeah. That you don't agree with it, right? Like, because, right. you know, the revolutionaries always become the tyrants, right? Like if you look mm -hmm. throughout history, it's always something where, the revolutionaries think they can do it differently, but then by the time they get there, like, wow, this is actually, there's a reason these people were acting like that. Um, so I think that there, there's something to be said for learning about how government works so we can change from within, because right. I think coming from without and destroying it is not the, the, the solution, right? We got to learn about it, come from within, change people's hearts and minds really. And, um, you know, it's hard like running for like, just even the last six, nine months, like with Bobby, like, man, it's hard what we're doing and, and you get a lot of flack and it takes a lot of energy and, you know, it's not even, it, there's another six months to, to do. So, um, it's tricky and it's hard. And, and, you know, for some reason people think they can just totally say the worst things to politicians and, you know, they, they mm. have no feelings, but, you know, I've gotten attacked myself and it's, it's not fun. It hurts you. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's also like when you get criticized for a film, it's, it's, it's like an art, you know, <laughs> right. it's like you get criticized that was hurting me when I got criticized and then, but then politics is like personal, you know, it's like, it's, it's, so it's kind of crazy, you know, but um, it's definitely toughened me up. You know, you, you kind of, if you can weather the blows and, and kind of keep going um, you do get tougher and um, it makes me appreciate, you know, creating art so more um, absolutely too. and art's very important too because that can change you know hearts and minds as well so um it, it's you know it's it's a it's a balance i think absolutely well i have i have a i have a, a fun question and and there's no wrong answers but the three levels of influence money power and respect and if you could choose one of those things which one would you choose and why um i think respect i would say um i think that's as I've been going around doing all these things, um, no matter if you're like a prisoner in jail or, you know, the running for president, like I think respect is the most important thing um, to me because it makes you feel like an individual and, you know, respected as like a, you know, in my opinion, a, a piece of God, let's say, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, everyone's a part of this whole universe. And I think, that respects very, I think it's the foundation, obviously, you know, money and power, you know, money can be, you know, good and bad. Right. Um, you know, but I think it's a tool. Um, and then I think that can lead to power or, you know, you don't necessarily need money for power, but our society is pretty, pretty structured in a way where money is power. Um, but yeah. there, there's different ways to do it, but I think respect you know, lo love and respect, right? Respect is is love, I think. Um, so I think inevitably, you know, if you, the, the golden rule, right? Love one another um, yeah. as you would love yourself. Well, a lot of people don't love themselves though. That's the problem. <laughs> that's true. Right? Um, <laughs> that's but I true. think that's the idea, right? Love yourself. And then, you know, that everything flows from that, right? Absolutely. I love that. That's a great answer. Um, well, it's time is winding down, but if you could give some advice to anyone out there listening, um, you know, that, that want to go out and maybe get in, into, uh, the entertainment world and, and, or politics or whatever, what advice would you give to that person? Um, I'd say just do it, you know, the Nike, quote. <laughs> um, I got Nike shorts on right now, actually. Uh, <laughs> It's hard to tell because I'm, you know, we're doing the Zoom thing, but <laughs> basically, yeah, I think just do it. Like, I think, you know, um, I wasn't ready for anything I went through on both the happenstance front and even now, like with pilots we're producing and these things and, and kind of doing, uh, you know, a small time production company as well, because I love keeping creative. Um, I think creativity is very, very important. It motivates me to other things. It's an outlet. Um, for me, you know, to give me the strength to do sort of the grunt work and in, in society organizing, you know, like Obama, I love Obama. Um, and he, you know, started as an organizer in Chicago, you know, and uh, I, I feel like that's, you got to organize the people around you to get motivated to make a difference because we, we can make a difference on our own, but you have to 
start with the things around you changing yeah. and then kind of evolving from there. But um, yeah, I just, I feel like just, just kind of, you know, obviously learn as much as you can before, you know, kind of figure everything out, you know, educate yourself prior to what you're getting into, but you're never going to feel ready. I think you got to just <laughs> do it, True. you know, and <laughs> you got to kind of get out there and just, just do it, you know, like, and, and then you learn, but be open to learning while you're doing it. Don't, you know, you can make mistakes, of course. And that's how you learn. Like, you know, my, my failures have taught me way more than my successes. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the classic sounds corny thing, but it's really true. Like it, it's like, you kind of can get, you know, out there and, you know, it hurts. You got to be willing to go through sort of the pain of it, but it's growing pains. Like I try to, you know, tell myself the the anxiety, right, that you feel or the stress you feel is actually energy. You know, I, I did yeah. that in tennis where I felt like, oh my God, I'm stressed. I'm like afraid and this and that. But actually that's what I feel when I'm having fun too. So it's the mm. same thing in your brain and your body when you're, you know, having fun and excited about something as to when you're stressed. It just, we kind of trick ourselves into thinking one's stress and one's fun but it's, a, yeah. it's a similar thing. So, you know, it's like when you go on set, right. And you're doing your thing and you've, you've committed all this time, you know, like for your projects, for example, it's like, you know, you kind of build the whole thing and then you're going and you're, you know, freaking out, but it's also like exciting, you know, and Yeah. Like, I, you know, this is, this is what I'm doing. This is what I meant to do. So it's, a, it, a, it's exciting in that way. And I, and I just feel like, you know, people should just, don't, you know, don't sit there on the sideline too much and overthink, you know, sometimes you got to think enough to plan and do it and then just go out there and do it and be okay with failing, you know, don't mm -hmm. worry about it, you know, um, because, you know, the, the truth is like people forget to, right. You know, people like if you fail and don't do good, like, and you do good the next time people, yeah. you know, don't remember that other one. You know, <laughs> right. the next one. like what have you done for me lately for better or worse like if you do right. great then you got to keep it up which is hard too right or if yeah. you're you know you become famous you know or whatever then you got to keep it up and you got to do better, yeah. better um which is hard too so it's just everyone going through stuff everyone has a hard time really um and and i think people need to realize like no one's perfect no one's got it all figured out and um, we need to, you know, love each other more and, and just, you know, um, yeah, come from that place. I love that. That's beautiful. Uh, anything you're working on any, uh, that you'd like to share? Uh, with yeah. The yeah. So yeah. we're doing this kind of cool. Um, I shot it about a year ago, um, but it's this cool uh, golf movie, actually. Oh, like, awesome. Pretty good golfer, but um, that actually the Owen Wilson's doing it now, but we had kind of done it before, but you know, not like they stole it from us, but you know, sometimes you get tapped into this creative vibe and, you know, our writer was really down for that. And I was like, let's do it. And um, I'm kind of a de degenerate golfer coming, got kicked off tour, coming back on tour. So that's a pilot we're working on. Nice. Um, there's also this uh, period piece, this, uh, this World War II movie where I look like a Nazi, but I'm fighting. <laughs> Nazis, you know, wow. so it's kind of interesting <laughs> dynamic where I'm rescuing this uh, uh, Latina girl that I, I fell in love with. Um, and uh, there's a lot of people that want to get me, you know, corrupt. And then I just stay strong. And, and then, you know, like um, yeah, you have to watch that one. Um, but yeah, there, there's a bunch of other things. There's this imposter society we're doing where it's the um, people take over people's bodies, you know, it's sort of like, mm -hmm. a, you know, where you, you um, yeah, you don't know who's who and, and things like that. So it's kind of interesting. And I, I was able to play like three different characters that got kind of, awesome. you know, took over. Um, that was cool. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of interesting stuff, you know. Uh, you know, I just okay. think stay creative, you know, just just keep working on your craft, stay creative. And then if your time comes, your time comes. I mean, my dad taught me that where there's a lot of luck involved, but it's also like you got to just keep going and you never know when you're in the right place at the right time, but right, you got to get out there. And you, you know, nowadays it's a little different with social media and stuff, but I think physically being out there is very important, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously interacting over, you know, Zoom, but it, there really is something to be said for in person stuff. Too. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure talking to you and and hearing your journey. Uh, definitely come back in the future anytime. Of course, of course. <laughs> always, always. I appreciate you having me. And um, of course. you know, yeah, let's uh let's get your movie made too, you know. Hey, I'd like that. I'd like that. I have a lot of things I'm working on too. I'll definitely I'll I'll call you for sure. <laughs> Perfect. I'm always sure. here to to serve and you know, just hit me up. Yeah, it's all good. I will. I will. Yeah, and also go to mc24.com um, and, and get out there and vote. We're, we're trying to get, you know, disenfranchised people to vote. We're trying to get everyone to vote. So um, we're doing a lot of cool things. So check out my Instagram at zkindle, um, Z-E-K-E-H-I-N-D-L-E, and um, get updated there. And uh, yeah. Vote, vote, vote. That's right. I love that. Absolutely. Thank you so much again. And thank you all for listening. And always remember to live, love, laugh. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.